Welcome back to Game On as we conclude matters in what's been happening out at Cote d'Ivoire at the Total Energy's Africa Cup of Nations. And to help me break it all down is a son of the soil, of course, in Jeff Katala. Mon ami, so glad to be in your company. Now, let's talk all things AFCON. And as far as our two finalists here, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, in your wildest dreams. Could you have imagined these teams in the final? No, not at all. Why not? Uh, actually, what we're seeing uh, Senegal against Morocco. Yeah. Or playing in, uh, playing the trend, actually uh, uh, playing in the final. But uh, it was very surprising to see that the host has actually reached the, the, the final because we were not expecting that. When you have the likes of Morocco, you have the likes of Cameroon, Egypt, well, we were not expecting them. It's mm. the same story that we were not even expecting uh, Cap Verde to be the first team to qualify for the last 16. True. Uh, now, we also have to look at the final in itself. What did you think of the play? I thought it was a very entertaining game, but got to work out our tops. Did you see them as deserved winners? What did you make of the play? Yes, deserved winners. I, I wanted Nigeria to win, but uh, yeah. with what was happening within the stadium, the head of the set was there, the whole crowd, the, the, the stadium was filled to... to, to uh, to, to full capacity, everyone in Cote d'Ivoire at Bimpe Stadium were actually behind Cote d'Ivoire. So with that uh, energy, they had to win. Rollercoaster ride, it must have been for the uh, Ivorian supporters who thought they were out of the tournament at one point, but it's been full of surprises. And part of those surprises were South Africa, and I'm South African, and the DRC, and you from the DRC, getting to the semi-finals in the third and fourth playoff. Was that a surprise for you? Did you expect that from DRC? And what did you make of their tournament? Yes, the, actually the whole tournament was about surprises. Yeah. And uh, the big guns, so-called big gun powerhouses of, of football in Africa, we went home very early. Mm. Would I say that the Minos went home, or the, the strongest team uh, stayed, or the Minos stayed, and the strongest went home early? So, but for me, DRC, I didn't know how they were winning games because that team won only one game, and that was against Guinea. <laughs> and they reached the semi final, which sure. was very amazing. Yeah. And South Africa, kudos to them yeah. for using only local based players. Actually, the PSL has done marvelous mm. at this particular AFCON. Now, um, in many people's opinion, and I'm one of them, this is one of the best AFCONs I've seen and I've enjoyed it. The numbers are there to, to back it up. 119 or so goals scored, an average of 2.29 goals a match. Uh, would you support that thought that it's one of the most entertaining AFCONs we've seen? Well, it's too early to say that uh, because we have to contextualize to mm. put everything into perspective. Because we're coming from four, well, when we started, it was nine, uh, 1957. Yeah. It were four. South Africa was kicked out because of the political regime. And then from three to eight, eight to 12, 12 to 16, mm -hmm. 16 to 24, since 2019 in Egypt. Mm. And this is the third edition of 24. Mm. But saying that it is the best AFCON, I wouldn't say that, but I, I'm, I, I'm appreciating the way uh, they were scoring a lot of goals. Now, a lot of criticism over the years, now you and I have uh, had these conversations for years going back, have uh, been aimed at CAF for various reasons. But when you look at this AFCON, the way it's been packaged, the numbers of fans that came out, and we had high numbers of fans, I think close to 19,000 a game per average mm -hmm. that came out for this AFCON, and the way it was packaged and presented to the world, would you say it was a job well done by CAF? Yes, they, they, are, they are on the right path, but I want them actually to, you know, to put things into order when it comes to ticketing, because mm. there were a lot of people that wanted to go into the stadium, but there were no tickets. Yeah. Yeah, and there's also the merchandising uh, side of the, the, the event. Mm. We had about more than 170 countries watching the tournament all mm. over the world. What CAF is getting that, uh, what for, what CAF is getting back out of from that kind of uh, visibility? Mm. What about the marketing? Mm. I, don't, I don't see it being very well marketed the way you go and work up out, oh, even at the, the Cup of America. But would you say we're taking, we made a, a vast improvement from Afcon's gone by? We've made, we've made the, you know, um, I would say a maiden achievement actually in doing that. But from next year, I heard actually Gianni Infantino, mm -hmm. he doesn't want it to be played in June. Mm -hmm. He wanted it to be played in March or early 20, uh, 26. Mm. Interesting. Now, let's go back to this tournament and talk players that stood out for you. The players you remember when, years from now, you and I are sitting and we're talking about the uh, AFCON out in Cote d'Ivoire. For me, Rowena from South Africa yep. was <laughs> outstanding. 
but I don't, I don't like the fact when they say that, uh, you know, he's, uh, the, he's got the, 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 the golden gloves yeah. because of penalty, because the penalties came after 120 minutes. Sure. Yeah, but his performance overall mm. during the game, yes. And me, they are also one player from South Africa that they didn't mention, actually. It is Vala in the defense. Yes. I, uh, I like the way he played. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Adingra from uh, Côte d'Ivoire. Mm. Those are some of, uh, so a few of my best players. And now let's talk all-round quality. We've talked World Cup in months gone by not too long ago. We've seen the standard. We've also seen Africa catching up in the way of competing with Morocco doing as well as they did. When you look at this AFCON, would you say the standard of the African game is moving in the right direction to be as marketable as the Euros that you mentioned as uh, the game in South America and other parts of the world? Are we catching up? Yes, we have to. We have to. We're catching up because I don't see many frontiers be, uh, uh, in this particular AFCON between the Maghreb region and the Sub-Saharan region. Mm. Because when you see that Mauritania and Namibia has won for the first time, has recorded victories at the AFCON for the first time, mm. it shows you that uh, there's no more, uh, the, the gap is not wide enough now. You can see that even Algeria was, Algeria was kick, kick, kicked out by uh, Mauritania, mm. so which means that we are on the right path. But one main thing that CAPS should do mm -hmm. is to, uh, to strengthen actually the, the hosting of a zonal tournament. Mm. Yeah. You see the Kosafa yes, region is doing well. Absolutely. Yeah. You see, Kosafa is doing well. Sekafa may come also on board, Wafu and the Central Africa and the Maghreb region. Mm. We have to do that actually to have big, uh, uh, you know, big and solid national teams. Well, wow. you have it. Solid points coming from uh, Jeff Katala. And unfortunately, we have run out of time here. So big thank you to you for taking the time to join us here on Game On. Thank you to Jeff Katala. Not forgetting, of course, Shane McGregor as well as uh, Jerry Scosana. I'm Cesar Mapena and we sign out uh, this week uh, as we always do here on Game On. Click, click. Bang.